So the Super Bowl is here and we've got to prepare for it. Started off the season with my buffalo wings. So we got that down. That's a staple for the Super Bowl. So you know how to make those. But chili is that other thing you think of at the Super Bowl that sort of has to be there. And today I've got a chili recipe that's gonna impress people. We're taking it back to another recipe from the food truck. This recipe sort of meaningful to me because after learning how to make bolognese sauce, which we learned last week, I sort of applied those same mentalities to figure out a chili recipe that I really love. There was this place by me that made the most amazing chili growing up. It was very meaty, it was spicy, and it was also sweet. And it was like, had this like dark mahogany color to it. So I had this idea in my head of what I wanted chili to be, but as I learned about cooking, I realized there were all these other cool things to add that can make it special. When I developed this recipe and I proposed it as something we would serve in the winter in the truck, I had two people who were sort of better chefs than I was. And so to get their validation, having them be impressed by it sort of made me feel like I had a personality and a style of food that was starting to develop of my own. This one has a lot of ingredients in it. Chili, it's got a lot of spice, it's got a lot of punch, and I wanted my chili to be everything to have sweet to have spicy and to have sort of just complex flavor and there are a couple of things that are going to make it special i've got some wheat beer which is just a nice allagash white beer blue moon works anything that is not too hoppy these beers have some citrus notes to them especially these wheat beers so that's going to go well with this recipe and we've also got mexican chocolate i got two so this is the one i've traditionally used this has cinnamon in it along with some sugar and some spices. I just saw this one today and I think I'm gonna use this one today because I couldn't find guajillo and I have cinnamon. So I can add a little bit of cinnamon to my spice mixture and then get my guajillo from this guy. But this is the one we use traditionally, so if you do see this, feel free to use that. You just don't have to add a little bit of cinnamon later because you've got it coming from this. And these are kind of the things that are gonna make this special, aside from the technique of kind of putting it all together. You might see Cholula hot sauce featured throughout this. This video itself isn't a sponsored video, but I am partnering with Cholula over on Instagram to do some stuff with them. So full disclosure, I do have a relationship with them, but this video itself is not sponsored. I've got a Cubanel pepper, I've got Poblano peppers, I've got bell peppers, and I've got some Fresno chilies, which are basically jalapenos. They're just at a different ripening stage than them, which makes them a different color, but they're about the same spice level. And so all of these are gonna add flavor. Traditionally, what we also used were whole dry guajillo and ancho chilies. And I was going to add those to this recipe, but I had trouble finding them. And I sort of figured if I had trouble finding them going to multiple stores, it might be difficult for you to find. So I'm gonna leave that out. But if you do find them, Whole Foods has them a lot, or if you're at a Mexican, grocer experiment with some whole dry chilies tap the seeds out of them chop them up and just literally throw them in and as you cook it they will break down and become edible and add a lot of great flavor to the chili but we're gonna leave it out today and just kind of strip it down a little bit more for a regular kitchen and so what I'm gonna do is just chop these up like we did with all the vegetables in the bolognese we're gonna pulse them through the blender just the same way I recommend you go watch my bolognese video a lot of the technique is the same and you're gonna learn a lot through the repetition of watching both of those videos, but I'm gonna leave a link down to that. We kind of have just like a lot of steps to do, so let's just get right into the recipe and get some of this stuff prepped. So just have one carrot, I'm gonna roughly chop it, I'm gonna roughly chop all the vegetables, but roughly chop them about the same size. And if you ever want to roughly chop one of these guys, you'll notice there are these lines that sort of run down the onion. If you just take your knife and just make cuts along those lines, sort of angled in, and then make your way around the onion. And you'll just make nice, easy dices.
Now I'm just gonna blend all those vegetables, just like I did in the bolognese video. We're gonna blend them into a coarse sort of grind. We don't want them pureed. We don't want them leaching lots of water. We want them sort of just like a, almost the texture of rice, basically something similar that's gonna mimic the texture of this ground beef. So let's just get these guys in. So I got my peppers, carrots, onions, garlic, and chili. All finely ground. You're gonna cook all the moisture out of them, brown it, develop flavor, add the ground beef, develop that flavor, brown it again, look for that fond on the bottom of the pan. Now we just gotta add a lot of spices. Just a ton, a ton of spices. But obviously the main spice is chili powder. And so I've got two types of chili powders. I've got this ancho chili powder, and then I have this chili powder that also has cumin, garlic, and some oregano in it. You can use one, you can use both. This is where like, it doesn't really matter. Just use this as a format. You can make sure that the bulk of it is gonna be chili powder, and then you can fortify it with all these other flavors like cumin, coriander, chili powder, paprika, red pepper flake, cayenne, onion powder, all those things you can add in, and you can sort of work with what you like. But I'm gonna show you how I make mine. And this last ingredient is not what we used, but this is my new favorite ingredient, ground sumac, and I think it's gonna be really nice in here. I'm just gonna add a tablespoon or two. It's just like this powder, this purple kind of powder. It resembles all the spices that's used, but it has like this citrusy element to it. All right, so we have our spices. I forgot to add a little, a little cinnamon. Just add a touch of cinnamon. You can leave cinnamon out altogether. Just don't put too much in. You don't want it to be a cinnamony flavor. You just want a subtle hint in the background. So all in all, it's a cup of spices that are gonna go and season this meat and vegetables and all of that kind of stuff. And then some brown sugar, and then our Mexican chocolate. We sold our chili with crispy tortilla strips, some pickled jalapenos. These are actually the ones we served. My brother made them for Christmas. They're just like the best. They're, we pickle them with carrots, which is like the traditional way Mexicans do it. And they're just perfect. So a few of these, some crispy tortilla strips, some fresh cilantro, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of sour cream mixed in with some Cholula hot sauce just to top it off. So I'm just gonna cut these guys into thin strips. Now I'm just gonna make my little Cholula sour cream. I'm just gonna head on over to the stove, cook this guy just like we would cook the bolognese. Pay attention to a few different additions of flavor and a few deviations, and I hope it just makes total sense to you about how the technique is what's important here, and you can just play with it any way you want, and you could see how different cultures use these same techniques to develop their own types of dishes, and I hope it really just kind of all clicks for you, so let's just get into it.
it's really good. So that spice mixture was good. I only used half of it. We made big batches, right? So basically, like one cup worth of spice blend, but the spice blend is right. This was just too much. So literally, I used just half of it, put this in a Ziploc bag, label it chili spice, and then put it in your pantry, and then you have it ready the next time you wanna use it. Because we cooked it the way we did, there's deep flavor and there's depth. Tomatoes come through. So you have a nice tomatoiness, but it's balanced with like all of these complicated spices and heat levels and sweetnesses. You have that brown sugar in there, so it's that all that heat we put in is balanced, right? So it plays in your mouth in a fun way. We added that wheat beer that gives it a nice different kind of flavor and body to it than like a wine or rum or anything like that. And then we added this Mexican chocolate that's really delicious in its own right. And you can almost see like the crystallization inside. There's a little crystals of sugar in there. So then what happens with that chocolate is it gives it this like mole kind of flavor. The a little bit of cinnamon adds this warmth to it. Cooked it down for about two and a half, three hours. With a chili, you kind of want it on the thicker side rather than a bolognese where you want it to be more of a sauce. Seasoned it right. It needs a good amount of salt. The crispy tortillas add texture and crunch, which is needed. The cilantro adds a nice like kind of bright punch to it. And the pickled jalapenos, they're not very spicy. They've been pickling for a long time. They add a vinegary aspect to it that is really kind of balances everything out. So it really has all the flavors kind of combining to make this what it is and it's really just delicious I promise you you make this for the Super Bowl people are gonna be knocking down your door and since nobody really wants to watch Tom Brady play football anymore you need to provide your guests with something else to look forward to you got to step it up with the food and this chili is how you do it Thank you for watching. As always, we're gonna take this recipe next time and we're gonna make some dope nachos. Thanks to all my patrons scrolling down right now. If you wanna be a part of that community, click the link down below or this little button right over here. That's all I've got today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.